What's up, you guys? Joss out out here in Singapore, back on this Night Owl podcast. You know me forever, just, you know, ranting along. But the point is, I'm trying to share with you the little pieces of epiphany I get throughout the day. And there are several um, on multiple occasions throughout the course of a regular day. Honestly, it's it's that crazy, but I enjoy it. So here I am sharing with you the things that I've like listened to and understood. And today I kind of want to talk to you about this situation I happen to be in because I thought it was really reminiscent of of interviews. So I have this idea of what I thought I wanted to do. I love doing interviews. I love talking to people. I love getting to know people basically. And I really love it when I get to know someone's story and then I get like a piece of their soul from them, right? They they kind of open up a little bit. They show the things that they're proud of, the things that they've accomplished. And as they're telling the story, you can tell that, damn, I haven't thought about these things in forever. Like, I really am a badass. I've really overcome some stuff. So I love that feeling. I really love it. And there's nothing more empowering to see someone catch fire with their own enthusiasm about their life and reminisce and really like just show off their light. Because I know when other people watch it, they get excited too. Their creative juices start flowing. They get this, you know, this spark inside of them lit, relit. And they get to, you know, go after their dreams as well. So I was in a situation recently where I had a chance to um, reach out and talk to a couple of people in the media industry and see if I could get them to share their stories. And obviously they were really over the moon about that. And I was happy, right? You know, this is going to be a great thing. And suddenly it became a situation where we needed to ask for permission, which is not a big deal at all. I'm really glad that we did that. But ultimately it didn't quite pan out and I was kind of bummed out about it. But then me in true form, I went back through the email that I wrote and I was wondering, well, shoot, is it because I said this word? Is it because I mentioned that word? Is it because I wrote it in this specific format? What could I have said that would have made it better? But the problem being that I needed to stop worrying about what they might have wanted to hear and just tell them who I was. So this is something we do all the time, right? In a relationship, when we're first meeting somebody that first date, you want to impress them with all you got. You're going to dress up, you're going to make sure you feel good. And then throughout the course of conversation, conversation, you're going to try and answer in such a way that you can guarantee that next date. We talked about this before, right? How you guarantee that next date? How do you get to see them again? How do you speak to them again? But eventually what you really need to be doing is being yourself because whether or not they like who you are depends on if you show up as you are, right? Uh, A lot of times we sit in front of a potential job opportunity, right? And the person is interviewing us. And of course, the resume is right there. They can read all of that, but they want to talk to you. They want to see if you can, you know, back up all the stuff that you put on your resume, if you really know what you're talking about, all of those things. But there is a difference between who you are and who you think they want you to be in order to get to that next place. Now, I'm going to tell you, I watched The Kissing Booth too, and I love that movie, but that I had so many notes from that movie, and this is one of them. There was a scene in the movie where um, the main lead female was actually sitting in front of a um, a college recruiter, right? It's customary in the U.S. that you write your um, your entrance essays to be able to show character, personality, who you are, and why they should actually accept you into their esteemed educational facility. I don't even know what to call it, right? They're their college, their university. But at some point, you're going to sit in front of that that admissions recruiter and speak to them as well. And this piece of advice that the young lady told the lead was, stop worrying about who you think I want you to be, because I think you answered every question perfectly the way you think that I wanted you to answer. But here's what I really want. I want to know who you are. I want to know what you think about life. I want to see in this essay a piece of who you have become throughout your years in high school and who you hope to be by the time you finish college. That's how I know if we're a good fit or not. So basically, she broke it down like this. Stop answering the way you think you need to answer in order to get through this interview. Be who you are. Let me see you without shame, without judgment, so I can decide if I can actually offer you the things that you might need to accomplish your dreams. Now, it's not always that easy, right? You don't always get these people that really want to see who you are. Sometimes they really want the perfect answer. Sometimes they're looking for a specific type of person to admit because they have like this, you know, um, ideal client or ideal um, employee or ideal student at their college. So it's not always like this, but in these cases, I get excited because those are real people. Those are people who really want to see who you are. And I think it's really important that we stop answering questions 
in anticipation of what you think the other person is expecting from you. Answer the question as you feel it. I've had this with clients too. People come to me and be like, you know what? I was talking to my girlfriend the other day and she got mad at me because she said this and I said that and it goes on, right? All the details are like just kind of muddled. But eventually they're going to come out and tell me, hey, they got mad at me for this, but I didn't want to put my foot in my mouth and get in trouble for something else. So I answered this way instead. But guess what? I got in trouble anyway. But what they forgot was they were uncomfortable in that situation in the first place. They could have very easily said, hey, you know what? I'd rather not get involved because this is not my place. I'd rather not say this to this person that you're expecting me to say for you because not to say that it's not my problem, but I think it would be disrespectful coming from me. There's a way to say what you feel. There's a way to show people who you really are and allow them the chance to decide if this is something that could be, you know, sustainable in the long run. But we are so terrified of what the other person will think that we tend to hide all those pieces that we're ashamed of, not knowing that the other person might have the capacity to love us through all of the shame, the pain, the trauma, all of that. Okay? So from me to you, this is the best piece of advice I can tell you. Be yourself in every possible situation. If you have to let people go because they can't take who you are, it's okay. It's part of the process, but that also frees up room for people that might appreciate who you are instead. Why would you want to go through life pretending that you're happy? Why would you want to go through life muting parts of yourself, wondering when you get a chance to just be yourself? Because you tend to resent the people around you at that point instead of appreciating them for who they are. Not everyone is comfortable opening up. Not everyone is comfortable saying, hey, you know what? I've been through this, so please give me a chance to sort this out. You know, not everyone's capable of saying, hey, you know what? I have a really tough time with this one relationship in my life. So if you're going to be with me, you're going to see me act ugly with this one relationship. I want you to give me some grace. Why? Because we don't want anyone to think we're weak. We don't want anyone to think that we're not completely whole and perfect and we know what we're doing. Well, guess what? Damn it. None of us know what we're doing. All of us are winging it, okay? So take that pressure off of yourself. Stop worrying what the other person is expecting from you. Be yourself. Let them see who you really are. And with any luck, they're the kind of people that want to be around whether whether you are winning at life or you happen to have a losing hand today. They want to stick around. They want to be around you. Because guess what? That's what they want for themselves too. So if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments below. I want to hear from you. But in the meantime, take that pressure off your head. Stop worrying about how to appear perfect like you have it all together. Because guess what? Me personally, I'd rather be with a work in progress. Honestly. Because then I don't have pressure on myself to be perfect all the time. Because guess what? I'm a work in progress too. All right, you guys. I'll catch you again soon. But in the meantime, y'all take care, okay? Bye.